Tonight, anti-pipeline protests ratchet up. Bringing their anger to the B.C. government's front door. Shows of solidarity across Canada shut down rail and block traffic. But not all First Nations agree. I'm good. So happy. <laughs> Hear from the Canadian family thrilled to be in quarantine. Another royal split. The Queen's grandson and his Canadian wife separate. What is the monarchy now going to look like? Fred Van Fleet. Wow. And the Toronto Raptors make history again. Kawhi, who? This is the National. And right now, Ontario is in a dispute with all four of its teachers' unions. A big sticking point for high school teachers is mandatory online courses. It just seemed like they, like whoever had designed it, didn't much know like how long it would take, what a student was capable of. So it just felt like a lot of pressure was being put on you. That is Zane Kelman, one student who has tried it. He is giving it a failing grade. The limits to e-learning later on The National. Back now to the labour dispute that is keeping Ontario students out of class. One of the issues in the province's dispute with high school teachers is mandatory e-learning. It will start this fall for those entering grade nine. Deanna Sumanek Johnson spoke with a student who tried it and found it did not make the grade. Last semester in my computer programming course. Living in a small town near Kingston, Ontario, Zane Kalman was initially excited about e-learning. Online courses gave him access to subjects not offered in his small high school, like writer's craft or computer coding. The reality was different. Workloads, I think, that were really unfair. And teachers that didn't really understand the course material, so they weren't much help when you tried to communicate with them. I'm getting this email from your teacher. Zane's mom, Angela, worries what will happen to her three younger sons when e-learning becomes compulsory this fall. She says it will mean hours-long access to computers that students might not have. We do have a computer at home, but it's certainly not dedicated to his use. An internet service is an issue. We have limited bandwidth where we live. It's expensive. Important links are on the side, the exam. Toronto teacher Behan Farhadi has studied the effects of e-learning on students for her PhD. I would say for the average student who really benefits from having a teacher ask them a question about their learning, recognize and, and ask and getting the data from their answer and then filling the gaps in their knowledge. Like that takes a specialist. While compulsory e-learning experiment has never been done in Canada before, five U.S. states have some e-learning requirements with varying results. What makes a difference, says this expert, is whether it's properly funded. There are good e-learning environments and good e-learning teachers. The key is essentially how we design, deliver and support the instruction, regardless of the environment. A spokesperson for Education Minister Stephen Lecce told CBC News, we are proceeding with developing and implementing a Made in Ontario program that will ensure student flexibility, technological literacy and a vast selection of courses. What that means for Ontario families like the Kelmans is still unclear. For now, they're walking towards the future of learning that is full of promises and big unknowns. Deanna Sumanak Johnson, CBC News, Toronto. And next on The National. That is a national for February 11th. Good night. Good night.